Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles. You know, one of the things that I really like about World of Warships compared to World of Tanks. In World of Tanks there are only two ways of winning a match. You either kill all of the enemy team or you capture their base. And that's it. But in World of Warships we've got the points mechanic. And more than one base. And that just gives you so many more different ways of winning. And if you're not paying attention, it gives you so many more different ways of losing as well. But I like that. Because it means that if you have your wits about you, and you're capable of thinking and breathing at the same time, you can turn around games that looked like sure defeats. Because the number of ships remaining on each team and the status of the bases isn't the only thing that determines who wins and loses. You have to pay careful attention to the timer, and how many points are held by each team, and any one of these things can be the reason why your team wins, or the reason why your team loses. Mech Killer here, in the tier 9, well, I suppose you'd call it premium. It's a free XP ship. It was the first free XP ship, the USS Missouri. You used to have Steven Seagal as the captain for this ship. Um, not anymore, unfortunately. The agreement between World of Warships and Steven Seagal lapsed, and they weren't prepared to uh, pay to renew it which isn't altogether a bad thing because the voiceover was incredibly bad I mean you've seen Steven Seagal act and that's when he cares <laughs> and it's not good uh, but the voiceover that he did for World of Warships he clearly didn't care about it was just hilariously bad actually I miss it for that reason uh, but anyway I digress um, this was the first free XP ship in the game. It's basically an Iowa, but with radar and a ridiculously good credit-making coefficient. Far too good as it happens, which was one of the reasons why the Missouri was removed. Um, well, not really from the game. You can still, if you're incredibly lucky, uh, get it in certain loot crates. But you could no longer buy it for free XP. But this is Mech Killer, by the way in his Missouri. I don't know how he got it, whether he bought it for free XP and he's had it for years, or whether he got incredibly lucky with a loot crate, but he does have one. This is a tier 10 battle. He's already coming under attack from the enemy tier 10 carrier, the Richthofen. The Missouri's AA is world class, by the way, even against the tier 10 carrier. Or it should be, but it isn't. <laughs> because nobody's AA is. Plenty of targets to shoot at here, of course. Unfortunately, a lot of them are tier 10, like the Yamato over there, but, well, when a battleship's giving you a broadside like that and you're on with these 16-inch guns, American super heavy armor-piercing shells, by the way, it would be rude not to take advantage. Oh, that was really disappointing. One penetration, one ricochet. Oh, well, never mind. He actually popped the radar there to spot the Amalfi that came around the corner, got paddled, and then thought he was going to be able to escape inside his smoke screen. And if anybody had bothered shooting at the Amalfi, uh, that had been detected by the radar, and he didn't shoot at the Amalfi either, but then again, the Yamato was providing so much more juicy a target. He was really, really unlucky not to do a serious amount of damage there. A minor kerfuffle there with a the friendly bookie gave him a honk on the horn to... Oh, hang on a second. A sailor. <laughs> Shots. Out. Come on. Oh. What is going on with the Missouri's guns today? This is supposed to be a super accurate ship. ship I mean, fire. true, the Salem was kind of half in, half out of cover. But still, this is not what we expect to see in our Missouri's. Right, so, anyway. About the corner of this island. So, there's him and the Ibuki. There's a Richelieu further to the rear. Richelieu's guns are not amazingly accurate, especially at range like that, but you can understand why a tier 8 battleship wouldn't want to be getting too close to that corner with a Yamato hiding around it. Nevertheless, regardless of how understandable the Richelieu's reasons for hanging back may be, it doesn't change the fact that there's not an awful lot of support down here. Mecha Killer is very much on point. Still, with the relatively a few number of friendly ships over on the western side of the map, that must mean that the friendly ships over on the eastern side of the map 
I mean, there's seven of them over there fighting five enemies. They must be absolutely crushing all opposition, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, when there's about eight minutes of this battle remaining, just, just remind me to take a quick look and see what's happened over there to the east. In the meantime... Oh, you've got to be kidding. He spotted the Amalfi with his radar. Two ricochets. What is going on with the Missouri's guns today? Actually, the Yamato is going to be a slightly more significant problem at the moment, because if he's taking his brave pills, and it looks like he is, the Yamato can slam its 18-inch shells straight through the bows of an Iowa-class battleship. Oh, that was a little premature mecha killer. You had him, if you just held your fire <laughs> and hadn't fired all of those shots into the island. The Richelieu's closing in. You are getting a bit of support, but it was just about as ineffectual as your first salvo was. I don't know why the Yamato... He's waiting to get all of his guns firing, isn't he? He is. Here they come, and that could have been a lot worse. But now it's your turn. There we go, right under the... T no! Oh, dear. Well, one Citadel. I think he aimed a little bit too low there. If you aim under the turrets on a Yamato that's broadsiding you, in fact, if you aim under the turrets on a Yamato that's angling in towards you, you will citadel it. Luckily for Mecha Killer, the Yamato, instead of turning away, decided to give him another chance. <laughs> At this time, straight under the turrets, there we go. <laughs> Six citadels. Straight into the ammunition hoists and the magazines. Fantastic. Well done. It's at this point where things could have gone very, very badly for Mecha Killer because that Amalfi is back. Now, I'm pretty sure that Mecha Killer is expecting to get torpedoed to death here. Because what other reason would the Amalfi have for coming out, broadside on, and then smoking up? Because it's an Italian cruiser with high speed smoke. At that range, if you fire the guns, you're going to be detected. And the Amalfi, to his credit, does not fire the guns, but he doesn't need to because the sides of his ship are lined with torpedo launchers. The only question is, where are the torpedoes? Radar up. <laughs> Look at the risk the Amalfi took here to get the torpedoes away. He survives, but that was more through luck than judgment. And where are the torpedoes? Mecha Killer's about to get his forward turrets turned around. The radar is still running. Shots out. Oh, there are the torpedoes. <laughs> From only one side, by the way. Yeah. There they are. Best torpedoes 2020. <laughs> so the Amalfi came out in front of a battleship with radar didn't fire the torpedoes from the starboard side and did a full turn Fired the torpedoes from the port side when it was too late and they were never going to hit anything. And then got radared and died. Yeah. Oh well. Let's just take a quick look at the scores, by the way, because Mecha Killer's team are 400 points ahead. And they're two kills up. They have control of three of the caps, although the enemy team are starting to flip Capture Point Charlie. But the enemy Salem, who is down there, and the flipping Charlie, is being hit. And he is being reset. So from this kind of position, it's kind of difficult to see how Metkiller's team could possibly lose. <laughs> <laughs> and if you think that, you either haven't played enough World of Warships or you simply lack imagination. <laughs> oh dear, they've just lost the Ismo. Oh dear, they've just lost the Minotaur. But despite that, they do still have a 200 point lead, they do still firmly control three of the caps, and they're busy flipping the fourth and final capture point. There is one dark cloud on the horizon, however. Uh, those seven friendly ships <laughs> over on the eastern flank have managed to get their asses kicked by the one, two, three, four enemy ships who have the survivors in full retreat to the north. But despite that, the team do have now a nearly 300 point lead. And they're now in control of all four of the capture circles. The enemy Richthofen's aircraft are coming in, but, well, not without casualties. And the Sovetsky Soyuz up ahead. 
is actually taking a pretty good position here. I can only presume that he's thinking, oh no, the Missouri can't possibly shoot at me from this position. I better inch forward so that he can. <laughs> and Met Killer is only too happy to oblige. Unfortunately, this is where RNGs is. Flips a big fat finger and Met Killer rolls a natural one. Yep, broadside of a Savetsky Soyuz, point blank range, zero damage. One shatter, two ricochets. What the hell? It's at this point where we see second best torpedoes 2020 from the Ibuki. Look at these. If he wanted to sink that island, those weren't too bad torpedoes. If he wanted to sink the Savetsky Soyuz, on the other hand, they were pretty shit. Luckily, our big Russian friend, like the Yamato before him, decides that he's going to give Met Killer a second chance. There's, uh, yeah, some good damage. Uh, although it was the fires set by the Ibuki that actually got the kill. And I'm pretty sure the Savetsky Soyuz was attempting to ram the Richelieu there. So the fact that he died when he did was really, really good news because the team continue to lose ships. The Ibuki is dead. The Cleveland, elsewhere on the map, died just before that. But despite the losses that keep piling up, because they do control all four of the caps, the team are comfortably a good couple of hundred points ahead. In fact, they're now more than 400 points ahead after sinking the enemy Alsace. Although, I'm pretty sure that Smolensk is... Nope, there, he's dead. Okay, well. Four ships against five. But they're 400 points ahead and they hold all four of the cap circles. However, all is not well. Uh, take a quick look at the minimap. Specifically, right to the far north where the friendly carrier, the Hakuryu, is. He has been in that position for the last five minutes. Which is kind of alarming, because three minutes ago, when the eastern flank started crumbling, he was being warned to get the hell out of there. And he isn't getting the hell out of there. He hasn't even turned around to point the bows of the ship in a direction which would enable him to get the hell out of there. Meanwhile, Met Killer here, who is one of the rare breed of World of Warships players who's capable of looking at a minimap and absorbing the information contained therein, is telling everybody, defend. Just defend. Don't fight. He's telling the Richelieu, stay together with me, so we can concentrate our AA against the enemy carrier. So naturally, the Richelieu is going off about his own business, getting attacked by the enemy carrier. The friendly carrier, on the other hand, with the surviving Ibuki on the team, the only other surviving ship on the team, desperately kiting away from the enemy ships pursuing him, which is going to be leading them straight towards that carrier. The friendly Hakuryu has still not yet figured out what the W key on his keyboard or the waypoints on his minimap are for, and he's still pretty much just sitting there, waiting to die. I'm not quite sure what his excuse is. It's not like he doesn't know where the enemy team are. I mean, his aircraft are the ones that just spotted them. Oh wait, no, is he moving? It looks like the bows of the ship are turning just slightly. It looks like the Hakuryu has figured out how to move his ship. I mean, he had to move it up there in the first place. I don't know how he could have forgotten how to do it in the intervening time. And it probably would have been a lot better if he'd figured it out, oh, I don't know, seven minutes ago when he was first warm, but the flank was collapsing and he needed to get his arse out of there. But hey, better late than never. Metkiller's decided that if the Richelieu isn't going to stick to him to maximise their anti-aircraft firepower, then he's going to stick to the Richelieu. And the team are at over 900 points. I mean, the 500 points ahead is good as. They do still have three of the four caps, and they're only behind by one kill. Metkiller begging the Richelieu to get back as he unleashes a salvo against the enemy room, who's peppering the Richelieu with high explosive, and, well, 8-inch high explosive shells really has the potential to mess up French battleships that never have more than 32mm of deck armour. That was a good hit on the rune. Not good enough. Metkiller, careful to not poke out more than this around the side of the island, because from this position he can fight the rune and just the rune. He doesn't have to fight all of those as well, and, well, it looks like you can lead a Richelieu to water, but you can't make it drink. The Richelieu, despite being warned, managed to get himself killed when the team were at 948 points, in control of three of the four caps and just about to win 
But despite that, the team are still at 912 points and they do still have two of the caps. And if Metkiller can kill that room, shots out. Oh no, they've just lost the Ibuki. They're now down to 870 points. Come on. He's got the rune back up to over 900 points, but there's only him and the carrier left. The carrier, of course, who left it far too late to get out of there. But he does still have most of his health intact. He's being pursued by an Ibuki, who is a very, very easy kill. Shots out. Come on, boy. 929 points. 933 points. Those are looking pretty good. Come on. Come on. God damn, he missed. And the carrier's not doing a particularly good job of defending himself either. Uh, yep, those missed. Gee, if only somebody had warned him, oh, I don't know, ten minutes ago, that he needed to get his ass out of there. Back down to 890 points. Second salvo out against the Ibuki. Oh, just one penetration. Don't know how that didn't kill him. They're already congratulating the red team in chat. Although Mega Killer is saying thanks for the solo warrior. <laughs> I don't know if he's being ironic there. Uh, because how can he possibly win this? I mean, yeah, all right, he's at 912 points, but there's no way he's going to go undetected. He can't just hide, because there's still a carrier in play. He's keeping him constantly spotted with his aircraft. He's down to 25,000 health? Less. Outnumbered four to one, carrier harassing him and keeping him spotted from the air. All four enemy ships closing in. And those tier 10 German AP bombs, they leave a mark. There's three minutes of this game remaining. There's no way he is going to survive for three minutes. But he doesn't have to survive for three minutes. He just has to reach a thousand points, which means he needs to sink something. Unfortunately, the nose in Alaska is the only thing that he can shoot at. And there's four and a half thousand damage, which is okay, but it's not enough. The Alaska, because he knows what's good for him, has switched to high explosive. And he's slowing down to ensure that that cap stays contested and he doesn't get any closer to the Missouri. Mecha Killer, on low health, about to be set on fire by the Alaska's next salvo, knows that he's not going to penetrate the angled bows of an Alaska, raises his sights, goes for the superstructure shot, Bang! Got him. There's the high caliber. Now he just has to stay alive for another second. And it seems like the game's... Look at the scores. 999. Come on. Come on. How long does it take to get one point? There it is. <laughs> Although I'm pretty sure that he was about to kill the Salem with that salvo. Uh, so either way, it's a shame he was robbed of the Kraken Unleashed, I suppose. Um, but, hey, <laughs> when your team are trying as hard as that to throw away such a massive lead, you don't take chances. <laughs> you just take the win. <laughs> because you might not get another chance. I think it's safe to say that Metkiller's back must be killing him after that game. <laughs> I recommend Metkiller. You go, yes, Akazuki, I know, I'm telling him. Akazuki recommends you go for a long lie down to recover. Everybody else, I hope you enjoyed that performance, because you don't see that sort of thing very often. And, of course, as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.